Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about our upcoming month of June 2020. I'm gonna be giving you guys my earlier thoughts on this month. My official forecast will be coming out on June 1st, however. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I wanna know what are you thinking this June is gonna be like? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and really what we're looking at here, we're gonna be reviewing my May forecast and also my spring forecast. So you can obviously skip over this if you don't care, but really this is just gonna be me going over how they went. And this was my May temperature forecast. You can see we were calling for above normal temperatures in the Southwest and below normal temperatures there for the Midwest, the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that went. And you can see almost perfect. I'm very satisfied with this monthly forecast, probably one of my best monthly forecasts of all time. So I'm very, very satisfied with how this went. Let me know in the comments how you think that May forecast went. Now let's take a look at our spring forecast. You can see we were calling for warmer than normal conditions for the deep south and the southeast, as well as portions of the four corner states, and then mostly below average temperatures there for portions of Montana, Wyoming, and also portions of the Great Plains and the upper Midwest. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that one went as well here. And you can see uh, pretty good. I think the Montana, Wyoming, and Midwest part was definitely good. And then the southeast and the four corner states, I could have expanded that a little more. Uh, and obviously I could have extended the below average temperatures into the Pacific Northwest, but those are very minor details. And I'm also very satisfied with my spring 2020 forecast as well. We're only 10 days away from the spring ending. So it's pretty much all said and done. All right, now let me know how that one did as well in the comments down below. We'll be moving on now to looking at our future temperatures. We're going to take a look at how the temperatures have been basically this week. And then we're going to move on and start talking about as we head into June. Now, I promise you we'll start talking about June in just a second, but I wanted to show you this was what we were dealing with on May 17th. Above average temperatures there for the southeast and a little bit of colder than normal conditions there for the northeast and the middle portion of the United States. Then, as we move towards today, you can see that the colder than normal conditions return for the eastern United States. But by the time we reach the 24th, which is going to be a Sunday... Uh, you can see that the warm temperatures actually return for the eastern United States again, and actually it looks pretty uh, far warmer than normal here. So things are going to be flipping all over the place here for the end of May. Uh, the tropical storm really messed up the forecast for the warmer than normal conditions overall, but I think things are going to kind of realign and still look at warmer than normal conditions to close out the month of May here. All right, now here is May 30th, and th why this is important is it's basically the end of May, the very end of May. So this is kind of the conditions we're going to be looking at to start the month of June. You can see we return to colder than normal conditions there for the central United States with warmer than normal conditions for the western and the eastern United States. All right, now we're about to move on, and what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our CFS version two climate model, and we're going to take a look at each week moving towards the middle portion of June as far as it goes out. And then we'll start taking a look at the whole month as a whole. All right, and here we go. This is looking at the final week of May, basically. And you can see we're going to have those warmer than normal conditions return for the eastern United States. This is the 20th through the 27th of May, and then colder than normal conditions for the west. But let's go ahead and move on towards the 27th through the 3rd of June. We're going to call this the, the beginning of June, actually. So we're going to, again, kind of move towards a pattern where we see warmer than normal conditions out west and also for the central United States, but then the eastern United States, again, dealing with warmer than normal conditions. This seems like all the models are in good agreement of this. So I'm quite confident that we will get into kind of this pattern. And this is what we were dealing with, actually, a lot of 2018 into the earlier portions of 2019. We saw colder than normal conditions for the central United States split with warmer than normal conditions for the eastern and western United States. I remember it was like that for September. September, October, and November, at least, of uh, 2018. I know that's kind of far back, but I still remember what my forecasts were and how those ones went. So it's kind of interesting to kind of go back and see similar conditions to those months being expected here for June. Now, this is, again, pretty much the first couple of days of June are going to be like this. Let's go ahead and take a look at what June 10th through 17th is going to look like, and it kind of becomes a mess. This is a ensemble model, which means there's multiple models 
taking an average of all four of these models and we're getting that result. So it's kind of all over the place, but the consensus is that we will be dealing with above normal temperatures in the eastern United States, especially, but also kind of the southwestern United States and then the central United States is kind of a toss up. So again, as time moves on, the confidence actually lowers. Uh, so we're going to have to take this one with a grain of salt, but the further in you get, the less accurate it gets as well. All right, now we're about to move on and we're going to go even further. I know I just ran it about the accuracy lowering, but we're actually going to go further. We're going to take a look at the last week of June until July 1st and just take a look at how the month of June could close out according to this model. And then we're going to take a look at the entire forecast for the entire month of June from the CFS model. And then we're going to kind of get into Noah's thoughts on all of this. All right, and here is June 24th through July 1st, so basically the end of June, that final week. And it looks like we're going to close things out with probably a warmer than normal week there. Uh, but obviously, this confidence is like very low by this point, so we really want to take this one with a grain of salt. But it's thinking especially the central and eastern United States will be above average and maybe the chance for near average conditions in the west and the northwest, potentially even below average. Uh, as that's the least above average area that I'm seeing here. But overall, it looks like a torch on this model, which is common on the CFS model. So really, I'm taking this one with a giant grain of salt. I don't really know how accurate this will end up being. Now, let's go ahead and get into that entire month forecast on the CFS monthly. And the interesting thing here is, actually, it shows up as below normal here. For the central United States, uh, and maybe even the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, with above normal conditions up there for Canada, above normal conditions for the eastern seaboard, and then above normal conditions there for the western United States. But again, this is kind of a model that typically isn't very accurate, and it kind of just looks like scattered colors on the map. And anytime I see that, it kind of really lowers my confidence in it. I've mentioned this in many, many times, probably a dozen times or more in my videos in the past. But when it looks like a toddler just kind of finger painted on the map, it really lowers my confidence. Because when you look back like, for instance, when we looked at the May temperature anomalies for how it actually went, or when we looked at the spring temperature anomalies for how it actually went, it never looks like this. It never looks like a toddler just scattered finger paint on a map. So why would a forecast calling for that actually be accurate? It's really just the model messing up and not really having any idea what's going to happen. So with that being said, we're about to move on to what Noah thinks, and it's not going to look like a toddler scattered on finger paint. It's actually going to look a lot more consistent. So we're going to take a look at their three to four day outlook. And then we're going to take a look at their May through July outlook. We don't have a June outlook from them yet. So we're going to go ahead and just take a look at the three month outlook. And then we're going to kind of get into my early thoughts. So I'm actually going to have a hand drawn temperature map to show you guys at the end. And then I'm going to get, give you guys a little uh, fun tidbit about May 20th, because this is a very interesting weather day in weather history. Now, this is what we call the three to four week outlook from NOAA. And really what this is, is it's just taking a look at May uh, 30th through June 12th. Keep in mind, this was made five days ago. So this is kind of going to give us the first half of June and really their thoughts. And you can see that they're calling for the most below average temperatures to be probably Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, that kind of area, potentially expanding into the Midwest and Great Lakes, which I think is very possible. The warmest areas look to be the southeast and then the southwest, potentially even the Pacific Northwest as well there. Uh, I think I'm most confident there in those four corner states being above average and potentially some of those southeast regions as well. So I'm in pretty good agreement here with what Noah has to say about this. Let's go ahead and look at that three month outlook, which again is May, June and July. And you can see again, they're calling for the eastern seaboard to be above normal as well as the southeast and the four corner states. So they're probably thinking that by the time we're heading into July, we're going to see this kind of horseshoe shape, which again is interesting because we were taking a look at conditions similar to this in the fall time of 2018, if I remember correctly, which I'm almost positive I do. Uh, and pretty much the Midwest and the Great Plains looking at those below normal temperatures. And really what's interesting here as well is this would kind of encourage severe weather as well for Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and even the deep south and southeastern states with this kind of a look. So I'd be interested to see how that ends up panning out as well. All right. Now here's my hand-drawn map that I told you guys I would give. 
uh, and it looks similar to their three-month outlook here. I think the southeast and the southwest, we're going to kind of be dealing with a horseshoe shape of these above normal temperatures to the south and along the seaboards, kind of climbing up the two seaboards. And then the middle portions, the middle northern portions of the United States dealing with those below normal temperatures. These are my very early thoughts. And even though there's only 10 days until I gave you guys my official June forecast, I would expect major changes to this just because we're going to get more model data um, more, you know, we're going to be able to see NOAA's forecast. There's multiple things that are going to be coming up that are really going to lead to more ideas of what's actually to come. Now for that interesting weather fact of the day, I'm not going to do these every day, but there's a really interesting one today. Uh, there's a town called Codell, Kansas, and you're looking at three tornadoes. One says 1916, one says 1917, one says 1918, and that they all happened on those years. In the same exact town, but get this, guys, they all happened on May 20th. So on May 20th of 1916, May 20th of 1917, and May 20th of 1918, these three tornadoes happened uh, back to back to back years. And I find that so interesting. That is so crazy that that happened. You can check out my Twitter for the full story on that. I uploaded that. That'll be on the pinned comment up above or down below. Sorry, if you're interested in more of that story, that'll be the top tweet, actually on my Twitter. So you can check more of that out if you go to my Twitter. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how many major hurricanes do you think we will see? And the K said, I think three to six major hurricanes. And I think that's a very uh, accurate, I think that's a very accurate idea. I think three to six is very safe. And I think we'll probably be in between that, which is above average. I think the average is three. So three to six would be above average. I think we could get four, five, six major hurricanes with the way things are looking. But I really, really agree with what the case had to say here. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.